Hello, hello! This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Ornery Orthography. Lots to do today. We're going to start with an introduction to punctuation and then focus on periods and sentence fragments. Sounds fun? You bet! Let's get started. An important part of mastering clauses is knowing how to punctuate them correctly. And so, we're going to start with an in-depth run-through of the different types of punctuation starting with the period. It ends sentences, right? Well, so do its buddies, the question mark and exclamation mark. We've seen lots of question marks in the past few weeks, so you should know what to do with those. An exclamation mark, on the other hand, is used whenever you want to stress an extreme emotion, like excitement or anger. Sometimes you want to do both, express a question with a lot of emotion, and it is possible to punctuate that in your writing. For example, you did what? There are a lot of emotions going on there. I'm sure you can imagine plenty of situations where you'd say or shout something similar, and none of them are very good. The one thing about this combination of the two marks, though, is that you should only use them in relatively informal writing. In fact, you want to avoid using exclamation marks at all when you're writing formally, like at work. Professionals are supposed to remain neutral at all times, so letting your emotions show is less than ideal. Three periods together are formally known as ellipses. Less formally, you could say dot dot dot. In short, they tell you that something is missing. Maybe you left something out of a quote. That's a very common formal use of this. Or maybe you use it at the end of a sentence to suggest that there's more that you'd like to say. Commas are the other big players in punctuation. They probably give students the biggest headache, but don't worry, we will spend plenty of time on them. What are they used for? To be brief, they tell you to pause and help avoid possible confusion. The semicolon is also useful, but rarely used, mainly, I believe, because many native speakers don't really know what to do with them. It's, for the most part, like a period, suggesting a close relationship between two complete sentences. But in certain situations, it can also be used as a comma, again, to avoid confusion. Regular colons, note the two dots instead of a dot over a comma, connect ideas, if not complete sentences as well, suggesting that what follows will give more details, summarize or emphasize, etc. The dash or hyphen does basically the same thing, but in less formal settings. It also connects words that are the same part of speech. And what is that bit of punctuation I have connecting those two words? It is a slash, a forward slash to be exact, which is important if you are coding on a computer. Dashes are horizontal while slashes are diagonal. They sound similar, but try not to confuse them. A slash, as you can see, also stands in for the word or suggesting that two things are interchangeable or at least both possibilities. An important example of this is the he slash she, if you don't know if the person you're referring to is a male or a female. If you recall, I did talk about that in a, a different video, and I suggested that if you're writing a formal essay and you're saying he, she, he, she, he, or she throughout the entire thing, it gets old very fast. Instead, you should use singular uh, genderless they. It's a little controversial still, but for the most part uh, accepted. Uh, they gets rid of your need to use the slash and just confuse people more. All right, almost done. We have the apostrophe, uh, which is commonly used to create contractions and possessives. We also have quotation marks, which tell you what someone is saying. Finally, parentheses. Parenthesis is the singular, spelled I-S at the end instead of E-S. And those indicate that the information hidden away inside is extra if useful information, so it should not be considered part of the main sentence. That information is separate. 
So there you have it, the most common types of punctuation. Obviously, there are plenty more on your keyboard, but these are the ones we use most frequently when writing traditionally, as opposed to typing. Plus, I clearly couldn't get any more on the page if I wanted to. I'll have to tell you all about hashtags and ampersands later. In any case, now would probably be a good time to pause the video and write some notes down. Even when students know what the punctuation mark does, they often forget what it's actually called. So if all else fails, this is good vocabulary for you to memorize. Now that we've completed our general review of punctuation marks, I'll spend the rest of this video focusing on periods, or as they call them in British English, full stops. Fun fact, did you know that the Romans didn't use periods at all? Apparently, it is possible to live without them, but I certainly wouldn't want to. What makes periods so important? For one, they make you stop and take a long pause, significantly longer than the one you would take for commas. This marks the end of declarative sentences. By declarative, I mean a statement, not a question or emotional exclamation. Periods also indicate abbreviations, which we'll talk more about in the next video. So, you need a period at the end of each sentence, sounds simple enough, yet the problem for many new writers is actually, how do you know when your sentence should end? Especially with long, complex, clause-filled sentences, the answer isn't always obvious. To solve this problem, you need to become an expert at finding the two essential elements of a sentence, the main subject and the main verb or predicate. So let's give it a try. We'll start basic. I eat. Well, I is my subject, eat is my verb. That's a sentence, right? I eat pie. Oh, these sentences just keep getting better and better. I again, subject, eat again, verb. Okay, it's a sentence. How about this one? I like. I'm waiting, I like what? The problem here is it's important to remember that some verbs are transitive. They require a direct object. And so that's the thing when I say a predicate, predicate includes the verb, the direct objects, basically everything that's uh, attached to the verb, everything that comes after the verb, okay? So it is good to have your subject, it is good to have a verb, but if the verb is missing, if it's transitive and it requires a direct object, if it requires something and you don't give it to it, then the verb is incomplete. All right, so I like what? In this case, that is not a sentence, but I like the pie or I like it. Yes, that will work. Okay. So be careful when you say, you know, verb, it needs to be a complete verb. It needs to have everything that makes it happy. How about this one? My really mean selfish jerk of a husband has already eaten all of the pie. <gasps> Sad but true. Okay. Is this a sentence? Well, is there a subject? Yes. It's a long, set, uh, long subject. Subjects aren't always one word I. They can be long. So my really mean, selfish jerk of a husband, I'm using adjectives and adverbs and prepositions to build a long subject, a long noun phrase. My verb has. Now it needs to be complete. Has what? Has eaten. Has eaten what? Pie. Okay, so the verb is complete. The verb is happy. I've got a subject. This is a sentence. Actually, you could even say it's an exclamation, right? This is where you would use that exclamation mark to say, I'm upset about this, right? He ate all the pie. So that's, that's your exclamation mark for you. So let's keep going. What do you think about the sentence, the pie, it's all gone? Well, there's plenty of students out there who would say, yes, it's awesome, let's keep going. Uh, 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 it's not correct. Well, why not, teacher? The pie, that's my subject, 
and then you have it's, which is a contraction, it is. So is is a verb, right? Yeah. But wait a minute, it is. What you have here is two subjects, the pie and it. You don't want two subjects. The pie, you could replace that with the pronoun it, and what you are saying is it, it is all gone. That's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, because it's and is sound so similar, many language learners who you know learned on the streets, not in a school setting, they hear and they think it's is is the same word. It's not. It's a contraction. It means it is. It's subject and verb all in one. So please be careful. Okay. Don't use it's as is. They're different. Okay, be careful of having a double subject. If you want to fix this, you could put a comma, make a little noun phrase, you know, a little noun clause, the pie, it's all gone. Uh, but it's just simpler to just say the pie is all gone. Period. I'm happy. Next sentence, he eating it right in front of me. What do you think about that one? A lot of people would like this one too. And I say, no, no, bad. He is my subject. And teacher, eat is a verb, right? Eating is not a verb. Whenever you have ing at the end of the word, it is either a participle, which is an adjective, or a gerund, which is a noun. These are verbal adjectives, verbal nouns. They're not verbs. ing words are never verbs by themselves. They can be combined with other uh, verbs to create compound uh, verbs. And we'll talk about that at some time in the future. OK, so the present progressive, right? He is eating. But eating itself in this sentence is an adjective. You know, students leave again. If you learn on the street, the is is said so fast. He's eating. OK, a lot of times it's a contraction. It's hard to hear, but it's always there. He is eating. You don't want to forget the is, because if you don't, what you have is a fragment. A fragment is an incomplete, in this case, a fragment sentence, a sentence fragment is an incomplete sentence. It's just a piece of something, okay? We're going to talk about three big uh, sins over the next two videos of what not to do when writing. Here we have a fragment. That's when you do not have your subject or you do not have your verb. OK, this sentence is a fragment. If I want to fix it, he is eating it right in front of me. Husband's still a jerk, but at least this time he's a grammatically accurate jerk. <laughs> Let's look at some more fragments. So I'll give you a hint. They're wrong. OK, uh, so eat now. If you, this is something that you might actually hear native speakers say in speech or in texting, eat now. The thing is that we aren't very grammatically accurate when we speak. Speech is always less formal than writing. Okay, so if you want to say something like this when you're talking to a friend, you just be careful. You know, try to stay grammatical until you're a true expert like a native speaker. But yes, eat now. It's possible, okay? In speech, we're not doing that. I'm teaching you the right way to talk. So, eat now is a fragment. Why? We have a verb, but we don't have a subject. If we want to make it a correct sentence, we would have to say, you want to eat now? As in, you want to eat now? That's the inflection. If you want uh, 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 the other yes or no question, do you want to eat now, right? We've talked about those questions. So you want to eat now? Do you want to eat now? Or even you're eating now? We just ate an hour ago. You're eating again? You're eating now? OK, here's another thing that uh, people will say or people will text, but it's not grammatically accurate. OK, you there yet? What's wrong in this sentence? There's no verb. So my subject is you, but 
uh, I don't have a verb, so are you there yet? Okay, there's my verb. I've got subject, I've got a verb. Remember in questions, they'll be flipped, so don't get confused by that, but the important thing is I've got a main subject, I've got a main verb. So to practice, your assignment is to think of some more commonly heard fragments used in informal speech or text. Okay, uh, see what you hear on the street. What have you heard in the past? Can you find things that uh, aren't really accurate and then fix them? Post something in the comments or send me an email and I'll let you go. Thank you as always for watching. There are plenty of more videos at apexlanguages.com. Have a wonderful, healthy, safe rest of your day.